Come on, let's give God praise for this praise team today. Thank you, Lord. Just the beginning. Come on, amen. Ready, set, go. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for those wonderful songs that focus us on God's timing. That's what we're going to be talking about today in our series on simplifying our life, simplifying our life, uh, trying to figure out how do, we, how do we live the best life that God has for us and, and simplify and get rid of all the clutter and all the distractions that we have in our lives. Uh, I, I want to talk today, we're going to talk today about maximizing your time. Or I, I actually, the title is Maximize the Moments. Say with me, Maximize the Moments. Because God, I believe God's going to give you special moments. Everybody's looking for one moment. But it's not one moment that God has. It's moments. And you've got to be prepared and ready to grasp that moment, to seize that moment or those moments so that you can be all that God has called you to be. And we're looking forward to what God's going to do. Last week, we had a really great time as we kind of gave an overview of a simplified life and what it looks like. And over these next several weeks, we're going to be uh, unpacking different elements of how do we simplify our life? How do we build systems into our life that we can be, be more and more, uh, much more productive than we've been before? And so today, we're going to talk about maximize the moments. And we're going to look at Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, Ecclesiastes written by Solomon. Solomon was one who obviously accomplished a lot. He did a lot as king, uh, so many different things he did, and he was so successful. However, I wonder often, what would he have done if he had really maximized his moments and simplified his life? Because he lived a very complex life. In fact, he had a thousand women. Come on, the Bible says he had 700 concubines or girlfriends and 300 wives. And I don't know how, to, I, I'm having a hard time with one. Come on, somebody, amen. <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, and, and I don't know how in the world he was able to manage uh, uh, a thousand women. Come on, amen. What would, he, what would have happened if he had simplified his life, if he had made sure that he was able to maximize his moments instead of trying to satisfy a thousand ladies, doing all the different things that he did? Many of us are like that. Now, you don't have a thousand ladies or a thousand guys, but many of us have a thousand plates spinning in our life. And we're so distracted. I called them as a message that we preached a couple of weeks ago, demonic distractions, amen, that move us away from God's purpose for our life. And what we've got to do is realize that there is an assignment that God has for you. And you're going to be most efficient and effective when you stay in that assignment. Come on, amen. And that means that you're going to have to steward your time and you have to guard your time and you have to manage your time effectively. Amen. And so it's, uh, we're going to have a really good time in this series. I've enjoyed already. Uh, if you didn't, weren't here last week, we had a wonderful time. Come on, let's give God praise for last Sunday. I mean, man. And, and today is going to add to that, amen, as we look to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. It's our custom to stand for the reading of the Word of God. Let's stand um, and uh, let's hear what God has to say to us on today. Those of you who are joining us online, we're so glad you're here with us, glad that you are able to be with us, and you can go to your word as well, and uh, we're just so thankful and grateful, amen, but we want you to be in the seats with us, I mean, it's something special about being here, amen, uh, you heard the praise team singing, amen, but we had folk getting up in the service dancing, come on, young lady, wherever she was, I almost joined her, come on, amen, amen, but I thought about my heart, I said, hold, slow, I gotta preach, let me, let me not do all that, amen, today, but I'm, I'm going to join you one day. Come on, amen. Dancing in the spirit of the Lord, giving God all the praise. What a tremendous blessing, amen, on today. But uh, we're so thankful for Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. It says, there is a time for everything. How many of you know that's right? There's a time for everything. Everything has its place. Every season, amen, uh, for everything. A season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, time to die. Time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. 
a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Amen. And we're going to talk today about maximizing those moments so that we can be effective. Father, we thank you and praise you for your love, for your grace, for your continued, Lord, um, belief in us and, and belief that we can be better than what we've been. We first confess we have messed up our time. You've given us these precious moments and we've wasted them. We've squandered them. But today we want to, Lord God, learn how to trust you, Lord God, with those moments that you give to us and begin to walk, Lord God, worthy of the calling you have for each and every one of us. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Amen. And amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Someone gave you $86,000 every day. Come on, amen. Wouldn't that be great? $86,000 every day and told you, you can have it, but what you got to do is you got to make sure that you use it and you spend it before the day is over. You, you, $86,000 you have to spend every day. I'm going to tell you, most of y'all, we stay up all day. Amen. You would be, you know, you'd be doing all kind of stuff to make sure that you maximize every one of those dollars. That it was $86,000, you would make sure that at the end of the day, you wouldn't leave with any money left on the, in the bank. I mean, I mean, if they said you got to zero it out every day, you'd make sure, man, I'm going to make sure that I put those dollars and I spend all of those $86,000 effectively, efficiently, appropriately. Well, God gives each of us not $86,000 in a bank account, but he gives us 86,000 seconds a day. Amen. Every day, every one of us in our life account, God deposits 86,000 seconds a day. And you got to spend them wisely. Because at the end of the day, you don't get them back. You don't get to, you don't get to do a carryover into tomorrow what God has promised and God has given you today. You got to use them all. Here's the question. How well are you taking care of what God has entrusted to you? How well of a steward are you being over the time that God has given to you? Because we got to make sure that we do it. We got to make sure that we not only become good time managers, here's, here's what it, really what I'm trying to get at in this entire series, how do you use your energy? Because it's not about time management, it's about energy management. Where am I going to invest my time? Where am I going to invest my energy? Where am I going to put my focus and my attention? And you've got to be very strategic about how you do that. Because the Bible says this, the Bible says there are many voices in the world, all of them have purpose, all of them have some significance, but what you've got to do is you've got to hone in on what are the most significant moments, the significant things you need to invest your time, energy, talent, resources into. And so we got to make sure you do that. Because we got to learn to value a, uh, the, the moments, the times that God, the, 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 the seconds that God has given to us. The, the, the minutes that God has given to us. You know what I've learned? People value a year. We'll value a year because, you know, this is 2020, the beginning of 2020. And some of us are so excited about entering into a new season, into a new decade, into, into a new year. Uh, and, and that's why December 31st is so popular. Everybody loves. We pack the church out. We do all kind of stuff because, man, we're going to have a new fresh start because we're going into a new year. And the stuff I didn't get to do last year and I did messed up, I'm going to do it this year. And so we end um, uh, the, the, the year with all these promises that we make to ourselves and God and everybody else. Well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And then, and then, and then, and then, you know, we don't do it. Because see, the truth is right now, it's February. It's February. And in fact, it's almost the middle of February. And, and some of the things you said you were going to do at the end of last year, you hadn't even started. Or you started and you already stopped. Come on, just, just keep looking straight ahead. Nobody know I'm talking about you if it's you. And, and, and here's what we say is, because we don't value the moments, we say, well, you know, I still got time because it's just February. I'll, I'll get it done in May. And, 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 and there you are pushing off what you should have started in January to May. And then May comes and says, well, I hadn't started yet. Guess what? I'll, I'll, I'll get to it in September. September comes and you start looking forward to December 31st, 2020. 
you can't wait for the end of the year so you can at least mentally get a new fresh start to start all over again to do the same thing year out. Some of us are still working on uh, resolutions that we made in 2005. We just, we just keep, you know, doing the same thing the same way, and that's the definition of insanity. And many of us are insane, not, not because we're in some mental institution, but because we have, created a, we have created, if you would, a world where we don't know how to perform and how to be successful in anything, and we don't know how to use our time right. And we waste so much time because God has equipped you. In fact, God has called you. In fact, God has uniquely designed you like no one else. There's nobody like you. And you are a precious gift. And say, say this with me. I am a precious gift. There's nobody like me. The things that I can do that nobody else can do. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, the Bible says. And what you've got to do is realize that and make sure that you make the best of what and who you are. Because God has put you in this world and he's kept you here for a specific purpose and you've got to help to find and discover that purpose. We spent all last year dealing with purpose and now this year we're looking at how now do we, how do we actualize that purpose into our life? How do we declutter our life so that we can be effective and efficient? Because we serve a creative God who has given us so much. You know, do y'all know that God is creative God? And in fact, the Bible says in Genesis that, that God is creative and a creative God, and he created us in his image and likeness, which means the very attributes of creativity is in us. We're not God, and we'll never be God, amen. But the point is, we have the attributes of creativity. But here's the problem. We don't take the time to exercise or to use or to strategize or to sit and think or create like him. We don't take the time. We don't use our time efficiently and, and therefore we're not able to create. We're not able to produce like what we are called by God and that what we could produce. And we have a lot of fruit that dies on the vine. We have a lot of fruit. See, we get mad at God. We say, God, you're not giving me fruit. You're not producing. God says, I'm giving you fruit, but you ain't got time to go pick it. I mean, well, my, there was a big uh, pear tree that grew and, and still grows in my grandmother's yard. Big old pear tree, amen. And, and, and every year there were pears that would come. I mean, just full of pears. But, 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 but many times there were seasons we wouldn't even go and pick them. And they would rot on the vine. The, the, the fresh fruit, beautiful pears that we could have taken in and made pear preserves and we could have, you know, we could have, we could have, we could have uh, had all a wonderful one of time instead of eating popcorn and Cheetos, we could have had pears. But we let it die on the vine. And there's a lot of us that God has blessed us, but the blessings are dying on the vine because guess what? We don't have time to pick it. And I'm going to tell you something, all around your life, there are blessings and opportunities, relationships, there are, there, are, there are things that God has for you, ideas he puts in your head. There are some of y'all, you get three or four ideas a day, but guess what? You don't have any time to perform any of them. God has given you dreams and visions and directions telling you what to do, but you have no margin in your life. You have nothing in your schedule to accomplish it. And so, so many things go undone. So many things go undone because we're not maximizing the moments that God has given to us. But we're going to do that, amen, as we continue to walk through this series. We got to maximize the moments because there is power and significance in a moment, in 60 seconds. You know how valuable 60 seconds is? Last week we had the Super Bowl, right? And we saw what I told y'all was going to happen. We, we saw old Shanahan have to go home. Messed up my Falcons and messed up San Francisco, too. We, we saw that happen, right? And, 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 and if you watch the game, you saw the game, but you also saw, saw commercials. And advertisers spent millions of dollars for 60 seconds. That's how valuable 60 seconds. Millions of dollars for, for 60 seconds to see, you know, a beaver or, or a horse pulling something or, you know, or, or a little baby, a kid. They spent... Millions of dollars, a man advertising a man for 60 seconds. That's how valuable 60 seconds is. Most of us don't understand that. We don't value the moments that God has given to us, the time that God has entrusted to us. 
And, and, and we didn't have to do that. There, there's um, 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 Benjamin Mays. I said W.E. Boyce last service, but it's actually Benjamin Mays. My wife corrected me. Thank you so much for that, sweetheart. Um, it, Benjamin Mays, great, great, great African-American leader, amen, in our community. He wrote, um, uh, uh, he wrote something that was just so powerful for us, amen, a poem, about a minute. He said this, I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer it if I lose it, give an account if I abuse it, just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. Ah, that's powerful. Eternity is in every moment, and he sees that eternity, that, that, that life can change on a dime, that, that everything can switch on a dime, that, that this 60 seconds could be the 60 seconds that changes my life, and I can't squander it or waste it. And many of us are okay and comfortable doing that. And, and, and we can't do that because I'm going to tell you, you don't have time to waste. You don't have time to waste. You know, there were people, there was someone, a researcher who did some research on uh, living 70 years. And, and if we lived 70 years, where would we be on the clock? And, and so what he did was he looked at if you're 20 years old, it's 11.08 a.m. to midnight for you. Midnight's coming. Turn to you somebody and say, midnight's coming. <laughs> if you're 25, it's 1225. If you're 30 years old, it's 125. If you're 35, it's 259 in the afternoon. It's, if you're 40, it's 416 in the afternoon. If you're 45, oh, you better get ready because it's 543. If you're 50, it's 650. If you're 60 years old, it's 1011 p.m. If you're 70 or close to 70, you're approaching midnight. Come on, somebody, amen. Three score and one. Come on, amen. We, we, we've got to make sure that we understand that we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are moving towards midnight. We're moving towards midnight. And the Bible says this, you must work while it's day, for soon night comes when no man can work. And what we got to do is we got to make sure that we do that because I can lose money, you can take my home, you can take my car, but the one thing that is irreplaceable is my time. So I've got to be a good steward of my time. Time, because you're not going to be 25 forever. You sit next to one of these millennials, tell them, you're not going to be a millennial forever. Because midnight's coming. <laughs> midnight is coming, and you don't know when midnight's going to come. I, I remember the wake-up call that I got. Not, I just turned 55 uh, 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 two Mondays ago, amen, but, 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 but that wasn't a wake-up call, nor was it uh, the, the health issues I had last year. That wasn't a wake-up call. The wake-up call was on us, 48 and a half. Because in the mail, I got an AARP card. I was 48. I wasn't even 50. You can't even use it until you're 50. And then at 48 and a half, they sent me an AARP card. I said, hey, what in the world? And so those of y'all young folk, ARP is old folks card to get discounts. <laughs> that you get to flash at different places and get discounts and different stuff. And you can rent stuff cheaper and all this. <laughs> I'm 48 and a half. And I'm like, I am not ready for an AARP card. And here I am, 55 now. It was a wake-up call to realize, what have I been doing with my time? What have I been doing? Because I don't want to leave this world with regrets. With regrets. Graveyards are filled with regrets. People who have all kind of regret. It all, instead of saying, here lies, you know, John or Sam or whatever, and a, a loving father, whatever, say, here lies John, here lies Jim, amen, full of regrets. Or, 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 or here lies a grave full of regrets. I don't want to die, and, and, and they bury a whole lot of regrets. I want them to, to bury me whenever my time is to die, and I'm going to die, you're going to die, we're going to all die one day, but I want them to know that casket was full of opportunities. That was, that's a casket not full of a man who was filled with regrets and things he didn't get to do and disappointments and unfinished business. No, that casket was full of a man who did what he set out to do. He maximized the moments. And that's how you don't grieve at the casket when your family members, amen, you know that granddaddy and daddy and mama and auntie and cousin, amen, they live the fullest life they could live. So, so, so I, I want to I I do that because, because it's, it's so important. Because none of us really know how old we are. And we don't know how much time we have. See, see you, you, 
I tell people at home going celebration, we do funerals, one of the things I'll say sometime is, I'll ask folk this, I'll say, how many old people do we have in the church? And in fact, let's do it now. How many old people are here right now? All the old people, wave your hand at me. All the old folk, wave your hand, wave your hand, okay. Uh, can I tell you something? You don't know how old you are. Put your hand down. You don't know. Because you tell your age by your birth date. You tell your age by your birth date. When you were born, I was born in 1965, and therefore, you know, 55, for some of y'all, I'm old. Or if you're 65 or you're 70 or whatever, some people think that's old. But if you're going to be like my grandmama, who lives, who is still living and, st and pretty much staying by herself, she has, my uncle stays there in the back house, but he didn't cook for her, do anything. She cooks her own breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She takes care of everything for herself. She does everything. She doesn't, nothing, no health problems at all. She's 102. She's on her way to 103. Just stopped driving in her 90s. Stopped working in her 90s. Come on, somebody. Amen. If, if we had asked her how old, that old lady, back when she was 60 or 65, she probably would have raised her hand. But the point of the matter is she's 102, about to be 103. Y'all don't hear me today. And, 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 and she was actually young. See, here's what it, most of us tell our age by our birthday. So some of y'all who are like 20, 25, 30 years old, you didn't wave your hand. You're like, I'm still young. I still got it. But, but you don't know what's going to happen when you walk out of here. You don't, you don't know when there's going to be a heart attack that's waiting on you. You don't know if there's a car, amen, that's going to flip over. You don't know what's going to take place in this world. You don't know that in 60 days you could be gone. So you may be 25 or 30 years old, but you're really young as it relates to birthday, chronological age, but because you're going to pass away in 60 days, and you don't know that because the only person who knows how much time we have is God. Amen. The Bible says this. The Bible says there is a day appointed to every one of us. Every one of us has an appointment for midnight. Every one of us has appointed time, and the only person that knows our appointed time is God. So since God is the only one who knows how old we are, amen, how, excuse me, how, 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 when we're going to pass, he, he's the only one who really knows how old we are. We don't know. So you, if you're 25 and you're only going to live six more months, you, you old. You just look young. But if you're 60 and you're going to live to be 102, you're pretty young. Y'all don't hear me today. So doesn't it make sense? since we don't really know how old we are, to make sure we maximize every moment, that we take advantage of every opportunity, that we don't squander not one day, because we don't know when midnight's going to show up. Come on, somebody. It, it's important. It's important for us to make sure we do this, because we're not going to be 25 forever. See, the Bible has a lot to say about time. We read Ecclesiastes, there's a time for this and a time for that, a time for this and a time for that, and we got to understand time and how to make the best use of time. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5, 15 through 17. Ephesians 5, uh, 5, 15 through 17 says this, be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, Paul says. Understand the season, understand the time, understand the opportunities. This is what he's saying. Understand, he says, understand the time and know what God wants you to do. Yeah. You don't love like a fool, recklessly, just aimlessly, just going after everything. Have order into your life. Have a schedule. Live, amen, according to time, amen, that's precious. Live within the space of the limits of your assignment, of your purpose. And make sure that you do that. that because when you move through life undisciplined and haphazard, you're not being a good steward of time. You're not being a good steward of time because time is more precious than money and resources and opportunity and everything. It's time. And God has given each of us equal amount of time. Now, here's what he hasn't done. He hasn't given us equal resources. He hasn't given us equal opportunities. <coughs> He's given us equal time. And he expects all of us to take the equal time we have and do something with it. In fact, here's what I believe. God wants us to double what's in our hand because he's given us enough time to do that. Now, I, I take this from Matthew 25. My second sermon I ever preached uh, 30 some years ago when I started preaching the gospel, my first sermon was on the word of God, making sure that we stand on the word. My second sermon was called Being an, a Profitable Servant. It was, it was called uh, Being a Profitable Servant or something about being a profitable servant. 
I remember that, Matthew 25. And I learned this principle years ago, and back in uh, over 30-some years ago now, amen, and I've been trying to live it out to be profitable. Here's what it is. Matthew 25, there were three servants of this master who had wealth, had resources. He gave to one five talents or five resources, five amount of resources in his hand. He gave another one two, and he gave another one one. They all had resources from their master, but they all had equal amount of resources. He went away, and he came back, and he says, now let, show me what you did with what I gave you. The one that had five doubled it and made it ten. The one that had two doubled it and made it what? Hey Amen. Got an A+. Plus. <laughs> and the one that had one, guess what he did with his? The Bible says he buried it. He didn't do anything with it. He took the one real source because he didn't, he didn't value it. He didn't understand the value of it. And he put it in the ground. So when the master comes back, he hands the master back the one that he gave him. One had ten because he had five. One had four because he started with two. But the one that had one had the same thing he started with. The master called him, you wicked, unpro not just bad, wicked. He says, you're wicked and unprofitable. And he threw him aside. And he took the one that he had and gave it to the one that had to him. And then he said to those who did it, he says, you're, 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 you're good and you're faithful servants and, 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 and you enter to my joy. I'm, I'm a, you, you, you were faithful over a little bit and I'm going to make you rulers over many. And I'm telling you, and, 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 and enter into the joy of the Lord, he said. Uh, what, what a blessing. See, he, now let's, let's digest that because it's interesting because I started, when I preached that first sermon, I was talking about the resources, the, the mounts. You know, and, and in some ways it's like, well, why he give him five and why he give him two and why he give him one? And sometimes we can do that. We can get jealous of what we see other people have. Well, you know, well, of course they're going to do it because they have five and of course they're going to do it. They have two. I just got this one. And many of you ought to like that. You look around and say, well, other people, other individuals have more than what I have. They start. It's not about the amount of resources. It's about what you do with what God has put in your hand. And let me tell you what they, did, what they didn't have is, yes, equal resources. They did not have equal resources, but here's what they all had. Equal what? Time. They all had the same 24 hours. They all had the same seven days. They all had the same 365 days of a year. And they had, here's the expectation of the master. Here's the expectation, I believe, of God, that whatever I put in your hand, I expect you to use it and to do your best to double it. You may not do it. You may not make it. You may not double it. You may not make it, if you, but I expect you to help make it grow. And stop looking at what's in somebody else's hands. Stop being envious and jealous of what somebody else has. Stop making excuses for what you have against what somebody else has. And take what you have with the same time I've given to you and maximize the moments. Because I believe we're going to be judged, watch this, more for how we use time than how much resources we come back with. God is not going to judge any of us and say, well, you, amen, weren't, didn't make a lot of money, and you didn't have a big name, and you didn't have a great title, but I guess well, here's what he's going to do. He's going to look at how did you live in the moments? How did, you, how did you live with the most precious gift I've given you after salvation, time? What do you do with it? What did you produce with it? And when we come back and say, well, I buried it in the ground, he says, wicked. Ooh, Jesus. You know, I thought about that. People who are lazy are wicked. People who are slothful are wicked. <laughs> okay, all right. Y'all are looking at me strange and I'm, I'm scared. I'm real scared. We've got to make sure we maximize the moments that God has entrusted to us because they're precious. And, and, and it, doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't take a heart attack like I had last year for you to, to wake up. In that. When, 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 when they cut me and they had to crack my ribs and open me up and stop your heart, put your heart through a machine, stop it. I mean, it was gone. I was, you know, legally dead, I guess. And here I am. And I don't know when they put me under, if I'm going to wake up or not. And I'm going to tell you, those first, Lisa, those first moments, that when you open up your eyes in the ICU and you realize you're still here, and you can, you can breathe in some air. <laughs> hey! If you can, you can shout. I, 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 
I'm telling you, I, I, I made some promises on that. A lot of thoughts went through my mind, but one of them was, Lord, I am going to live my best life. Lord, I'm not going to waste anything. Because I'm going to tell you what happens. You're laying on that gurney when they got you in that cold operating room, and it's freezing. And they're getting ready to put that stuff in your arm to put you to sleep. I'm going to tell you what you start thinking about. You think about the people that you, you, you love and the people you want to make sure you live. God, help me live. You're praying all those prayers. But here's what, here's what I'm telling you what, what went through my mind. And some of you all have been through major surgery. You know what I'm talking about. You start wondering about ah, stuff I didn't get to finish. And Lord, I hope I live. Get me out of here because I got to complete this. You start thinking about the stuff that was on your agenda, on your calendar, on your, on your table for you to be able to do. And you start thinking about the fact that you didn't do it. And you start making some promises. God, if you let me out of here. <laughs> Lord, if you let me live. <laughs> I promise. I'm going to do X, Z, Y. Yeah. But you ain't got to wait for a heart attack or wait for some setback or wait for somebody to fire you from a job. You don't have to wait for somebody to walk out of a relationship with you. You can maximize the moments by making a decision right now. Come on, somebody ought to give God a shout of praise. He's good. Because there is no thing called 61 second minute. It's 60 seconds, not 61. There is no 25 hour day. It's 24 hours. And we all get the same ones. God, we serve a God who, who knows how to work on time. He created the world. How, how long did it take the Lord to create the world? Six days. And on the seventh day, he, he was so ordered and he had time. He, he had a seventh day. He said, I'm just going to kick back and binge watch my creation. He was ordered. We, we serve a God as order. Much of the Bible is, is written on order of time. 40 days, 40 nights, you know, three days, 40. I mean, you, you hear there's this rhythm. It's a rhythm. Come on, amen. I wish I had time. Amen. I'm not going to get into this because I'll be here for another 30, 40 minutes after I'm supposed to be. Amen. But the rhythms. And what I'm learning is, is how do I discern the rhythms of God, the rhythms of my energy, the rhythms of the spirit. Oh, that's a whole, that's a whole deal. Because there's a rhythm. How to, how to catch the waves that God is sending. Amen. Making sure that I'm, I, I'm not loaded down with weight that I can't catch the waves. That, 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 I, that I can ride the waves that God is sending. When you get on a cruise ship, if you get on a cruise ship, you'll notice if, if, if you step out on the cruise ship and look at it, there's a line underneath the, uh, on, the, on the cruise ship. It's a red line or blue line or some color that it's going all the way on the whole, the, the, uh, the cruise ship from the end to the, from the, what well, is from the aft to the starboard. Oh, no, it's not right. From the aft to the whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's, it's a line. <laughs> And that line is there to let the captain, let the people know, amen, how heavy the ship is, how overloaded it is, because it can't drop below that line. Listen, not because it can't sail, it can sail. That ship can still sail being below the line, having so much weight that it's overloaded. It'll still sail, but it won't sail well. It won't sail fast. And if a storm comes, it will not navigate the storm well. It won't sink necessarily, but it's going to be a rocky ride. And some of y'all right now are so overloaded in your life that it's a rocky ride. You're not sinking. You're still floating and you still think I'm being successful, but you're slow and you're not steady. Come on, somebody. But if you can ever learn how to offload some stuff, if you can ever learn how to declutter your life, amen, you can begin to glide and slide. Y'all don't hear me today. Come on. Yes. You gotta learn how to do that. So that means you gotta pay attention to the those those things that are calling at you, pulling you away from what God has called you to be and do. You gotta figure out, God, help me not to not to hear the voices of the world and my addictions calling me. Help me, Lord God, to hear you. Because we got a lot of addiction. Say with me, addiction. Addiction. Say it again. Addiction. One more time, maybe you'll get it. Addiction. You miss it. Something calling me is an addiction. 
We have a, a ministry here called Celebrate Recovery, meets on Tuesdays and Thursdays for addictions, not just people in drugs, people who are dealing with alcoholism, no, 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 people who are dealing with, uh, you know, issues of can't handle money, can't handle uh, food, can't handle sexual issues, can't got anger issues, all kind of different stuff. Addictions, things that are pulling them away from the calling of God. There's a calling that God has given to you. There's something that God has called you to do. You need to hear the voice of God and walk in those steps. Walk in that wisdom that he's given to you. But your addiction is adding speech. Uh, addiction, addiction, adding diction, diction speech. Adding talk, added talk, added speech, added speech. God has given you some clarity about your purpose and then your addiction is calling you away with added speech. See, those who are dealing with addictions, they tell you it calls them. People with drug addiction or food addictions or sexual addiction or relationship addictions or work addiction, whatever those is, it's calling you. You know, it's calling you. That drug is calling them. That, 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 um, that, that uh, Popeye's uh, chicken sandwich, it's calling them. It's, I mean, it's like, come, no, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it speaks. And it's an addiction. It's an added addiction, added speech from the clarity of what God has for you. And so addictions are, are speaking to us. And what we've got to do is have the discipline and the strength to say no to it. To be able to say yes to the will of God and yes to the word of God and what God is speaking to us. And some of us are so addicted to TV and, and social media and all these other things that we have no time to maximize the moments of our lives. Because we're giving them to these added voices. Is that good? We're giving it to these added voices, added voices, and that's the enemy. He's the, he's the, he's the, the Bible calls the devil the God of this air. The God of this air. The Bible says there's, there's many voices in the world, and you've got to discern the voice of God and have some clarity in your life because there are many voices calling at you, pulling you, addictions, trying to pull you away from what God has called you to be and do. And what you've got to do is you can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't let that happen. Now, I'm not saying you don't binge watch TV. I mean, I had my birthday two, two Mondays ago, and I'm telling you what I did, man. I, I sat right in front of the TV from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. That's what I did. I cut my phone off. I didn't want to do that. That Monday, I, or that Thursday, whatever that day was, that was a Thursday, I believe it was. That Thursday, I sat there. Um, uh, um, uh, it was actually a Thursday, not a Monday. But that Thursday, I sat there in front of that television set, I didn't move. I sat there. I mean, I got up, you know, to, to refill, and I drank water. Uh, um, I, I got away from, you know, Coke and caffeine and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, I, I, I just, I, I, you know, I, 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 I enjoy. I don't even remember what I was watching. I, I watched some, I watched the whole, I forgot what it was. I watched the end of some whole series that I had been trying to watch, and I binge watched the whole 12 episodes. And, I, I, and to this day, I can't even tell, even between so I'm trying to remember, what did I watch? I don't even remember less than two weeks ago what I was watching, but I had a good time doing it. And it's okay to do that sometimes. You just can't do that every day. Because there's some of y'all, that's your life. You binge watch everything. You have no discipline. You're always in front of the television. You're always on social media. You're always in some refrigerator. I don't know. And you can't do that because it's pulling you away from the purpose that God has for you. And it, it's controlling your life. It's calling to you. There's some of you all who are not going to be able to go to work tomorrow. You know why? Because tonight you're going to find out who shot ghosts and it's going to upset your life so much that you are not going to be able to function. I can't function because so-and-so shot. I know it's true because back in the 70s when they, when they found out who shot JR, it literally, literally, some of y'all are too young to know this, but it literally wrecked America. Literally. Production in America, it's true. They, they, they said one whole week, America had almost zero productivity because the people found out who shot JR. And the black community is going to be devastated over this next week. <laughs> it's sad but true. But what does it matter? It's Tariq, <laughs> Tasha, Ramona. 
What's the other guy's name? Yeah, I knew y'all knew it, see? <laughs> I mean, it's okay to enjoy certain things in life as long as it's not taking control of you. That nothing should be your master. That it doesn't master you, you master it. And so your schedule, your, 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 your time is, is so important. Because you got to ask the question, what is consuming my time that I'm unproductive? Well, the, the number one time waster is procrastination. Procrastinating. Putting off stuff. We know how to do that. Well, no. Procrastinating. Having no follow through. And so we are always forever fixing to. I, there's a little illustration that I used to do, and I'm not doing it now, amen, but I would, I would say, I am going to give somebody the miracle, a miracle. God has anointed me with a miracle, and I'm going to give the miracle to you now in the name of Jesus. I said, I need four. The first four people who come up here, God has anointed me, and I'm going to give you the miracle in Jesus' name. I'm going to put it in your hand. Good Lord. Four folks, I mean, they'd be running up to the church. So I, I, No, only four. So I pick four people, and I say, you've been asking God for something, and God is anointed me to put this in your hand today and you're going to walk out of here and you're going to be so powerful I'm telling you you're going to get what it is that you've been waiting on and they go ooh, ooh. and the person they go yes yes pastor somebody's crying oh, yes. and I say open up your hand and close your eyes and I have them stick out their hand and close their eyes and they go oh pastor put it yes whatever it is and I put this little thing and I say close your hand up when I put it in your hand they put it in their hand and I said and then and I say all of y'all at the same time open up your hand and they open up their hand, and they look at it, and everybody has this strange look on their face. What in the world is this? And I say, you know what that is? They say, yes. What is? No, no. What is? It's it's actually a washer. It's just a round look, you know, a washer that goes on screw, the little the little round piece. Uh, and, and and you know what I called? It, I said I renamed a washer a round to it. It's just a round to it. And what I have put in your hand is a round to it. So now, when you say, I'm going to do this and this, when I get around to it, you got around to it, and you can accomplish whatever. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Yes! Come on, somebody. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I haven't done that in years and years. We got to make sure that we do it. We got to live, and I know we're in Georgia and we're Georgia peaches, amen, but, but we got to live like Ohio. Ohio, only handle it once. Only handle stuff once. Only handle it once. Like Ohio, do that. Make sure you do that. Don't, don't, don't stack up emails and text messages and those things. Just, just deal with it because you know you feel better when you do. When you finally accomplish something and get something that you've been putting off and you do it, man, you feel like, wow. You can have that feeling every single day. You got to stay in your assignment. You got to live on purpose. You got to uh, you got to abide in your calling, because your assignment here it is. Your assignment will dictate how you spend your time. Your assignment will dictate how you spend your time and who you spend your time with. Assignment does that. Purpose that we talked all about last year. Purpose lets you know how to spend your time, how to organize your schedule, and, and not just be haphazard all over the place. Running here and here and here. Your purpose will help you to know that. I, I, I serve on a couple of boards. Or I serve on certain things in the community and whatnot. Amen. And every now and then I get asked to be on something. Uh, for instance, nobody's asked me to do this. I'm making this up. Amen. Um, but uh, uh, um, uh, it's, let's say somebody asked me to serve on a board to help um, stop balming, baldness in men of a certain age. And they want me to serve on a committee and serve on a board where we can sit and talk about how to market this, how, this new product that's coming out. And they want me to serve on that. I'm like, no. Because guess what? It has nothing to do with my assignment. I, 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 I care about balding men. I love them. I pray for them. I, I pray loose that baldness and let it go. Jesus, I'll do that. I'll do all of that. I'll pray for them. But I don't want to sit on a board for every month for hours at a time talking about how to cure balding. That's not a part of my, it's somebody else's assignment. It's not mine. So I can easily say no to that. And so those things that are on your assignment, learn how to say no. 
the, the, the middle letters of the whole um, uh, English alphabet are N-O. Learn them. They're in the very middle. Middle. No, no, no. It's off assignment. It's off task. And you need to make sure you know how to do that. But, but, but it's hard to say, say, say no to something that you like. So I, 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 you have to discern and figure out what those things are. You have, to, you have to, Lord, help me to understand, is this a part of my assignment? One of the boards that I'm serving on, or one of the groups that I'm serving with, is with Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton's foundation on drug addiction in Atlanta. What's happening in Atlanta with the opiate crisis? And, 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 and we're sitting around trying to strategize and figure out, you know, how do we do it and what are programs and what things and what's going on and how can we do? And so once a month for three and a half hours, we sit around and we talk about those things. Amen. And it's great. And I knew when they, when they asked to do this, it, I didn't even have to think about it. I had to pray about it at all. Amen. Uh, much at all. I, I did pray, but I had to pray about it much or long at all. Yes, I, I want to be a part of that. You know why? Number one, it's in my assignment. It's a part of what we do. We're a recovery church. And and, 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 and so it's going to help me. Having those relationships, being in that whole process is going to help me to be able to bring um, 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 clarity to that problem that's in our community. Amen. So it was easy to say, yeah, I'll serve on that. Here's the second reason. They said, if you serve for six months, we'll give your church $5,000. I said, oh, wait, sign me up, bro. <laughs> sign me up. We'll put $5,000 into so that you can expand your programs or start some new program. Hey Amen. I was like, yes, because it was in my assignment. It was easy to say yes to that. Now, what's harder is something else. I, I, like, for instance, there's, there's a group right now that, that, that's looking and wants me to, to kind of spend time with them on a monthly basis, hey Amen. dealing with um, human trafficking. Prostitution in our, in our city. I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. The issue is I'm all for it, but I'm trying to figure out, is it me that should do it? Now, I've already, I've already decided we're going to be a part of that, but here's the issue. I don't know if I need to be the one going. That may be something I give to Darren or our women's ministry or some outreach area of our church. Somebody else might need to go to those meetings and be a part of that. Doesn't mean that I need to be the one doing it. So what you got to do is, even if it's something that you enjoy, you got to make sure, should I be doing that? Because when I say yes to something else, I am saying no to something else. And I've got to make sure, amen, that I'm not uh, being overloaded so that I can accomplish what God has called me to do. Sometimes other folk, it's not, it's, it's not a no, it's a him or her. You, you got to figure out, J William Booth is the founder of the Salvation Army, and back in the 1800s, they wanted him to leave out of Europe to come here to America to deal with some major crisis that was happening, and he sent them back a word, because it would take him two months to get there, and he's like, listen, you know, I, I'm, I'm busy doing this, that's what he, and they kept saying, we need you to come. He, he finally sent them back a telegram, a man with one word, and it said, others. <laughs> others. And you need to decide, amen, what others can and should do and not you yourself. Stop saying yes to everything, especially stuff that you like. Because there's a difference between that. It's a difference between, between what's, what, let me say it this way. Let me say what I want to say. I, I, this is something else that I'm learning. I'm going to teach our staff this. That we're doing a get ready to do a staff retreat. And one of the, one of the things I'm going to teach them about is this. And I, I'll tell it to you now. That just because something is prior doesn't make it priority. Okay, let me break that down because I know it's kind of different. Just because something is prior or first or it was somewhere first doesn't mean it's actually going to get the priority that it needed. Let me show it to you this way. We plan our calendar out in 2019 all of for 2020. Here's the programs we're going to do. Here are the things we want to do. Here's the time, the meetings that we want to have, the major stuff. We put all that on the calendar. If you go in the conference room, you'll see this big old calendar on the wall with all these dates and times and things all in it all the way across the board, right? All, you know, there, and, 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 and we got it all up there, right? When we fill that in, different ministries say, well, I want July 14th as a date to have this meeting or this activity, and this is what I want to do. Boom. Okay, nothing's on there now. Boom. That's good. You got that day. We got you, right? That was going to happen in 2020, July 14th, 15th in, Ju in July, right? Boom. But we're in January, February, right? Fine. That, that's great. We, we, we can do that. But March shows up. And something happens in the community. Some crisis takes place. Some opportunity. 
Maybe something happened with terrorism or something happened with the elections or something happened with, with uh, the economy or, or something happened in our community in a bad way. Somebody very, very important. Something happened or, or some opportunity opened up for us that where we need that July 14th date now to be able to have this ministry that has become priority. The other thing was there prior, but now something has come to replace it that's more priority. So guess what? I have no problem saying, I know you were there first, but that doesn't mean that just because you had it on the calendar and you were there first, because you can get mad. I, my stuff was there first. Y'all always moving my stuff around. Well, your stuff ain't party. Because this crisis, this issue came up that has much more impact in the ministry, in the community. It's going to meet more needs, amen, than us, amen, reserving the entire building, the entire place for 15 people. When we have an opportunity to minister to 500 of them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So just because something is on your calendar doesn't mean it's got to always be. And some people want to hold you. Well, I'm the one that asked for it. I'm the one. Well, no, 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 no. Priority. We walk and live by priorities. Purpose. Oh, that's good. That's helping some of y'all. Because you don't, you, you, just because, <laughs> when you say yes, you mean yes. But if something happens, to where you can't do it, just have grown phone conversation with people. Don't skip out on them. Just tell them, you know what, I know I said I can do so and so and so, you know, but something has come up in my life, in my family, in my time, and I can devote the time and energy to what I know I told you last year or two, three months ago or five, whatever it is, that I, I can't do that anymore. Things have shifted. But don't dodge them. Come on, somebody, man. Are you dodging, ducking, ducking people? Because you don't want to have a grown folk conversation to tell them, you know what, I know I said that I can do this, but I can't do this right now. Because things have shifted. Because just because it's prior doesn't mean it's priority. Okay, all right, that's free. I ain't going to charge y'all for that. And just because something's open on your calendar doesn't mean you need to fill it. Let me say, just because you got a blank spot on your calendar and there's nothing going on, don't mean, well, I got to fill. Because some of us are so driven by making sure we're busy and doing and doing and doing and doing. We just got to fill up every moment. No, you need to have times to rest and replenish and restore your energy and not rush into the next things because we have such fatigue and we're burnt out. We're a burnt out generation and we're crashing and burning because we cannot, you cannot maintain that level of adrenaline adrenaline. You can't have that level of stress. And some of y'all are so stressed out because you, you carry such a heavy load all the time, all the time. You're always on 10. Always. I got to go here and I got to go here and I got to And you're not effective anywhere. You're hurried. We talked about Martha last week. Martha, you're hurried. And Jesus says, chill, girl, chill. Be like your sister Mary. Sit down. Sit down. Get off your feet. Chill. So you can be restored. You have something to say. Jesus himself lived on a schedule, didn't he? I love the Bible. If you read the Bible, it would say stuff like this. As was his custom, Jesus would go. Jesus, as he would do often. He had schedules. He had times and seasons that where he scheduled in his life. And we need to make sure that we're doing that as well. We're so driven. We live in this technological age where information is just coming at us all the time. And that's why social media is the greatest addiction of our age. I, I believe it. I believe there's a lot of other addictions, but social media, whoo. And there are many of you all, you just, you just, oh my God, consuming your life with other people's life. You can't live yours. Amen. Following everybody, knowing more about other folks' life than your own life, your own family. Some of y'all know more about what other folks, you know more about what Kanye and, 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 and Kim are doing than you do your own kids who live in the next room. You know more about their children and what their kids need and the stuff that they need than your own mama and daddy. You call them up almost every day to find out those that you're following, what's Kanye doing, what's so and so, you know, whatever, and you don't even call your mama. I'm trying to help you not to go to counseling next week if you, if you don't need it. I'm trying to give it to you. We need counseling. But, but if you make some changes, maybe you won't need it as much if you begin to make some adjustments in your life. Be, be careful how you waste time on social media, spending so much time on it. 
They, they, they tell us, listen, here's what they tell us. The, a lifetime of an individual, the, the, the average guy, not, this is not even the people who just, you know, following everybody. The average person, a man that's, that's on social media, uh, you know, average times uh, do, doing, doing stuff, will spend in their lifetime what it takes to get a bachelor's degree, a four years bachelor's, and a two year master's. That, by the, that if you did not stay so much on social media, you would have had two degrees. Huh? Two degrees. That's how much time. The, the scientists are telling us that the millennial generation today are going to have neck problems when they get in their 60s. They're going to have back problems, and many of them will have posture problems where they walk around like this. Because this is how they live their life. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making this up. I'm telling you. That's where we are today. And it's consuming us. It's an added speech it's addictions that we've got to deal with so that we can be effective we got to make sure that we get rid of all those things and stay in our assignment because assignments are sensitive time sensitive your assignment I'm almost finished your assignment is time sensitive there's certain things that have to happen now the Bible would say read and read the scriptures about Jesus and the apostles and others immediately immediately right away straight away you got to make sure that you are not so overloaded that you not living below your line, that when God says move, you can move. You can, you can take advantage of the opportunities that God has, and you're the ones in control of that. Because there are appointed times and appointed seasons so that your fruit doesn't dry up on the tree. You got to do it, and you can't blame other folk. It's you, you know. And we serve a God who will give us wisdom. The Bible says if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God. He'll give to him with, um, withhold not. So if you want to know what God's plan is, he says, I'll give it to you. But what you got to do is you got to show up. God will give you the wisdom, but you got to use it appropriately, which often is about how do I now appropriate God's wisdom into my life? And if I miss the opportunity, I can't blame anybody but myself. I used to run a baggage service department at America West Airlines, amen, and deal with all that stuff. And, and we were cross-trained to be able to deal with to deal with um, uh, um, ticketing and gates and stuff like this. So at times, sometimes I would have to serve on the gate, to, you know, as people are coming in the plane, you know, you, and, and, as a gate agent, as, as people are getting on their plane. And, 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 and there were people who cussed me out, called me everything but a child of God because they missed their flight. Their flight's at 11 o'clock. It is now 11.15. <laughs> and they are cussing me out because they see the plane still out there. Why can't, and the jet waste pulled away, amen, and, 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 every, and, and the, the plane's about to go. And they said, why can't you call that back? And they're cussing me out. I said, well, sir, it was 11 o'clock. It's 11.15. When did you buy your ticket? We've had this schedule for a year. I mean, when they get, I was the kind of person, you, you know, I was nice until you kind of, you know, and then something would come out. I was like, hold up now. You talk to me like this. It's a little barely minimum wage job. No, no, you, it's your fault. Don't be blaming me for you. And I know there are times with traffic and other things, but you've got to make sure you schedule your life to where you anticipate interruptions. Those of you all who are people who know that service starts at 11 or you got to be at a meeting at 11 or you got to whatever, and then you choose to leave at 1030 and it takes you 30 minutes to get somewhere, it's 11 o'clock meeting and you leaving at 1030. No wonder you late all the time and be walking in the meeting late, 10 minutes late, so y'all know traffic's bad. Yeah, we know traffic's bad, why don't you know it? Don't you know you live in Atlanta, Georgia? Even if, I don't care, Monday through Monday, amen, it's traffic everywhere you go. So you anticipate, you don't leave it at 10.30 for an 11 o'clock meeting, you leave, amen, at 10.15 or 10 o'clock. Uh-oh. Yeah, Lord. It's important for you to make sure that you prioritize, that you anticipate, that you do those things and not blame other individuals for your lack of whatever it is. You gotta not let people make you feel responsible because you're on purpose. I'm closing with this. Because you're living on purpose. I, I, I'm, I'm tired. I, I'm not gonna do it. I, I'm living in my purpose. I'm not gonna let people dictate and make me feel bad about staying on my lane and in my lane. This is what Je Je Jesus was, his parents were mad at him. Where you at? Remember he, he went away and he was, and he said, you should have known I was been in my father's house. 
all the time. I'm about my father's business. I'm, I'm doing. He was always where he was supposed to be. And you've got to make sure you're where you're supposed to be and don't do it. Because here's a statement. I want you to hear this statement. A person with an hour to kill usually wants to spend it with someone who can't spare a minute. Let me say it again. A person with an hour to kill usually wants to spend it with someone who can't spare a minute. And there are people who want to waste your time because they just want to kick it with you. Amen. But tell your neighbor, I can't kick it with you. Because if I keep kicking it with you, amen, it's going to kick me. And I have about my father's business. I'm trying to do the will of God. And I have to make sure that I'm investing my life in things that matter and things that are important because I am exchanging my life for this conversation. I'm exchanging my life for this meeting. I'm exchanging my life for these things. And I've got to be more strategic about what I do. I, I, in 2019, we had less meetings. In 2020, we're going to have even less of meetings because we're going to stop, amen, running across, amen, the world, meeting and meeting and meeting and meeting about what? Why couldn't you send me an email? <laughs> send it to me in a text message. Why couldn't we get on Facebook? Why couldn't we give on one of those things and do an electronic kind of deal where we can see each other's face on FaceTime or something like that? We got we to figure out how do we be, begin to be more smarter instead of working so harder. We got to do that. Gotta figure out how to do this life because I've got to reserve my most precious moments for my greatest opportunities. And I don't mind coming to a meeting if it's going to be about purpose. I don't mind coming to a meeting if, if I have something to contribute. If you're going to pull something out of me, if I've got something that I can contribute to make it better, amen, I don't mind doing that, but I just don't want to sit in a meeting just because it's on the calendar. It's just because it's prior doesn't mean it's priority. Oh, Lord. I don't need to, all of that in my life. So I want you to begin to maximize the moments. I have something else I'm going to say, but I'll say that in another sermon. We're going to, I hope they've helped you today. If it did, come on, can we give God a shout out for you? Because I want you to be effective. We are in, the, we are in a generation, this is the generation that is busier than ever. But we're also the generation that's less productive than any that's been before us. We, we are more busy, we're more driven, we're more push, 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 but we actually do less. Oh, yeah, we produce Apple phones and all these things, yeah, all that kind of stuff. But, man, productivity, down. Our, our, our production is down. And we are stressed out more than any generation. We're not, we're living longer, but we're not, we're not living well. We're not living well. And I want you to simplify your life so you can live well. And one day hear God say, like he told those two servants, the one with 10 and the one with four, well done. Good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little bit, but I'm going to make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Let's give God a shout out. Thank you, Lord. If you're here, as we all stand to our feet, I want you to come and say, Pastor, I want to give my heart, give my life to Jesus today. I want to write this moment right now. I want to turn my life over to Christ. I want to know him and love him and serve him. Would you come, man, woman, boy, girl, come right now while you have time. Come. This is your moment. This is your season. You can come right now. There's, there's things you can't put off, and one of them is salvation. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Won't you come and turn your life over to Christ? Can you do it right now? Man, woman, boy, girl, come while you have time. Maybe you're looking for a church home or church family. We invite you, encourage you to come. Salvation, rededication, or finish with this local church. Come right now while you have time. Would you come? Man, woman, boy, girl, come right now. Turn your life over to Jesus. I want to give my life to him. My times, my life is in his hands. And I want to put my life in his hands. That's what the Bible says. Your times are in his hands. So I want to put my time, my life in his hands to let him orchestrate it. So I, I'm, I'm under arrest, Lord. Use me how you want to. Would you come right now? Take my time. Take my talent. Take my tent. Take my treasure. It's yours. Would you come right now? Man, woman, boy, girl, come right now while you have time. Is there one? Those of you who are watching us online, maybe you want to make a decision for Jesus. All you got to do is that thing that says prayer request at the bottom. If you click that and tell us that you are made a decision to trust Jesus, we'll contact you and get in Get, get you what you need, wherever you are, whether you're in Ohio or Indiana, 
California or around the world, we want you to know God loves you. And we want to support your growth in the Lord. God is so good. Let's give him a praise, somebody. Amen. Come on, let's bless him. Come on, let's give him glory. He's so good. Amen. Thank you all so much. We're thankful and grateful. What a blessing. I'm going to ask our brothers to come in just a moment. Amen. But uh, you may take your seats. Would you would? Just, just a second. I want to, I want to honor our dear sister, um, Dr. Winsome Whitaker. She joined our church in April 16th, 1993, in the first year of our ministry. We turned 27 years old as a church last week. She went home to be with the Lord October 22nd, 2018. And in loving memory of her, uh, she was in the hospital more in and out the last two years of her life and couldn't be in our service, in our worship service. And so one of the reasons why we have our live streaming is because Dr. Whitaker, at her death, left some resources for us to be able to purchase some cameras and do some of the things that we have, technology that we have, so that others would not have to suffer and miss church because of illness or some, some issue that tipped them away. And we're so thankful and proud of that. And she was also a doctor, physician, a great physician, many of you all. She was your physician. And she uh, wanted to make sure that she was head of the health ministry when she was feeling well, um, us to have a defibrillator where someone had a heart attack, we can bring them back to life. And so the defibrillator that's out there in the lobby area, uh, she left some funds as well for us to be able to buy that defibrillator. We bought that a few months ago. And under that, we're going to put this plaque in loving memory of our beloved Dr. Winsome Whitaker. Under that. Let's give God a shout of praise. In God good. Her sister Nikki. Her daughter Janae. Is Janae in the house today? Where's Janae? There's Janae. Y'all come on up. God is so good. Y'all come on up. Can you give me a moment? Can you do this? Is it all right? Y'all come on up. We just want to thank you for the gift of your mom, and your sister, and just the love that we have. I know this is just a little simple, simple plaque, but amen. But just to remember her and remember her memory and remember the love that we still feel to this moment for her. Amen. And we thank you so much. So many countless people will know the Lord. People will be saved and set free because of the things that she is still doing. So her memory, her legacy is still going on. Can we give God a shout of praise for what God's doing? So we're going to put that. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right. We appreciate y'all so much. God bless y'all. Amen. Amen. God is good. God bless you. God is so faithful. Amen. Let's give today as the Lord has blessed and prospered us to give. And we're so thankful and grateful. I want you to give um, the, um, the, the, the one thing I want you to note is that this coming um, Wednesday at six o'clock we have, um, let me get my notes here. We have a young lady who uh, is going to be with us. Sarah Collins Rudolph. She's the fifth woman in the four young girls who were killed in the Birmingham bombing. Remember the Birmingham bomb bombing in the 60s? The little girls in Sunday school and the church blew up because of this racist evil, a man that was there and, um, and, and blew up and killed those little girls. Well, there was a fifth young girl that survived and she's willing to be with us Wednesday night. We're, we're so glad to host the, with the Greater Atlanta Black uh, Prosecutors Association of, jo of, uh, of, of Atlanta that we're going to be hosting that. We've got already 460 people that are going to be here um, that's already registered online and been sent tickets. We want you. They're asking us to make sure that even though it's a free event that you do um, go online, let us know that you're coming. And, um, and so we want to make sure that those of us in our house will come and be a part of this. This is black history. This is history. I wish Dr. King, I wish Benjamin um, E. Mays, I, I wish W.E. Du Bois, I, I, I wish, hey amen, some of those um, great, great leaders of ours were still with us. And while we have Sister Rudolph with us, we need to make sure that we're in the house. Because history is being repeated, y'all. Do you know that? Do you see what's happening in our world today? Then if, if, here's one of the things. If you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. And right now we see a cycle, if you would, of discrimination and other things happening in our world today. And we need to make sure that those individuals who walked during that season in the 60s and 70s, 50s, 60s and 70s, can speak into the new generation to who we, who we are and encourage us. So I want to encourage you to come and be here at 6 o'clock. It starts at 6 o'clock. It's going to end at 8 o'clock. 
come and hear her and other great leaders that are going to be here to speak to us. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to do it because he has shown that he's ill right now. John Lewis was supposed to be here as well. Don't know if he's going to be well enough to be here. You need to hear these icons of the civil rights movement of our black community, and you need to make sure you're here 6 to 8 o'clock. Bring your children, bring your teenagers, and point to them and say, that is history because they know more about um, uh, um, you know, what's going on in other people's celebrities' lives than the people who have paid the price for us to be and enjoy the freedoms that we have here today. Amen. So make sure that you're here. So what I want you to do on the back of this little sheet of paper that we gave you uh, about the uh, classes, and hopefully you're taking the material that I'm preaching here, and you're taking, we gave that to you as well, and you're getting a crew and you're walking with people through it, and you're getting two or three people to say, here's what my pastor's been preaching. Here's some additional information. Let's walk through together. Let's simplify our lives together. Hopefully you're doing that. And you're going to put on this form, let me know if you're doing that, your email, your name, how many people, where you're meeting, and just turn that in to us. But on the back, it's blank. Just put civil rights um, on, the, on, the, on, the, on that side, your name and email, and we'll register you ourselves. Because I'm not quite sure if you're going to do it. If you go home, you may not get online and do it. We'll do it. If you turn this in, we'll register you for the event amen ourselves we'll put your name in and we'll do it but we please do that if you don't do either one of those still show up okay say that with me still come so even if you don't do a form even if you don't go online and do it amen make sure you still show up because uh, you can still come there is even though it's ticket an event it's free and we're gonna let anybody in that's gonna be, that wants to come so let's pack the place out as we hear sister Rudolph and we begin to walk the walk that God has called us to walk. Amen. Let's do that. Father, we pray that you'll bless the offering. Let it go to upbuild your kingdom and for your glory's sake. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. And somebody shouted, amen. And amen. Amen. God bless you. We have uh, our, as you all know, our, our um, LCD, our old LCD that we had since we were over at 2000 uh, and 1399. It has finally died on us. So we've got a new one, but it's a little heavy. It came in on Friday, and it's a little heavy. It's big, big, much bigger. And we want to make sure that it's going to be mounted correctly. We don't want it to fall. So we've got a crew that's coming in that knows how to mount those things. And so it's up to code and all that stuff. So I don't want it to fall on my head or your head or anybody's head. We want to make sure it's mounted.